Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuang. Today, let's get to know the Bo the Succumimus. Succumimus was a well-known genus of Spinosaurid dinosaur that lived in the Cretaceous period of Africa. There were two groups of Spinosaurids, one was Baryona Chini and the other was Spinosaurini. We can broadly divide it into these two groups. Spinosaurids were very familiar dinosaurs with large sails on their backs. We now know that these dinosaurs had tail fins, which made them suitable for submerging in water for a long time. Succumimus belonged to the subfamily Baryonyx. They were more suitable for walking on land, and their two hind legs were longer. A common feature of Baryona Chini and Spinosaurini was a very elongated face. Succumimus had the longest face of all dinosaurs, and it had a very elongated face, even among Spinosaurids. Spinosaurids had a relatively slender face, especially its long snout. However, the face of Succumimus appeared narrower and longer. First, let's take a look at its head. Succumimus was famous because when its face was discovered, it was found to have a surprisingly long snout. It looked a bit like a Malayan gurial or the gurial, so the researcher at the time, Mr. Paul Cyrano, gave it this name, saying that Succumimus looked like crocodiles. In fact, its face was even more exaggerated than that of a crocodile. Viewed from the side, it had a mouth full of teeth like a crocodile, and viewed from the front, its face was very narrow, very flattened from left and right, a bit like some birds. Comparatively, it was a bit like animals such as cranes. Its mouth was full of teeth. Looking closely at these teeth, we can find that there were longitudinal grooves on the surface like those of Spinosaurids. However, unlike Spinosaurids, whose teeth were known to be very straight and conical, Succumimus teeth were curved like most carnivorous dinosaurs. Looking more closely at its teeth, we can see that they were curved. The teeth on the upper jaw were turned outwards, a bit like the teeth of Pterosauria, and its teeth were turned to the sides. Like most Spinosaurids, it had a relatively primitive structure, a notch, in front of its mouth. There was a corresponding protrusion on the front of the lower jaw, and the protrusion of the lower jaw was covered with sharp teeth. When its mouth was closed, this tooth fit into the pit in the upper jaw. This structure helped Succumimus prey on fish. Although similar to many Spinosaurids, the nostrils of Succumimus were not as far back as in most Spinosaurids. We know that the nostrils of Spinosaurids were generally relatively backward, but the nostrils of Succumimus were closer to the front of the mouth, indicating that it might not be aquatic, and it didn't stay in water for a long time. If its nostrils were backward and upward, it was easy for it to stick its nostrils out of the water when it raised its head to breathe. Succumimus did not have such a structure, so it might live on land. The skulls of Succumimus found in the past were not complete, because only this part of their skull was found, and not the parts behind their eyes and cheekbones. So in the past, we always thought it was a bit like certain fish, such as belt fish or GR, and we thought its head was relatively elongated. But now, we have found a large number of their skulls, and reassembled the back half of its head. We now know that their eye sockets were sloping downward, and its lower part was much wider than we had expected in the past. Therefore, it can be said that its head was narrow in front and wide in the back. On the top of its head, there was a bump in front of the eyes. Like the skulls of many Spinosaurids, such as Baryonyx or Spinosaurus, there was a raised crest between the two lacrimal horns. But unlike many dinosaurs, there was a forward-extending bony plate at the front of its crest. There was a large amount of epiphysis above its nose, which was the rough part of the bone. When it was alive, this part connected either to the muscles or to the rougher and tougher keratinous structure. This part of its nose was obviously not connected to muscles, so it was connected to the keratins. Therefore, we speculate that its crest ranged from the eyes to the nose. From the fossil, it was most obvious here, but it might be more obvious here when it was alive. Let's look at its neck. Succumimus did not have a neck like that of Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus had a very slender, swan-like neck, while Succumimus had a very short and thick neck. 
Studies have found that its neck was relatively soft and had a relatively wide range of motion, so it might have a more relaxed posture when walking, and it was lifted up like this, forming an S-shape, which was convenient for it to catch fish. It might pull its head back, standing in the water and looking down. Then let's look at its body. Its body was strong and broad, but not as wide as that of Spinosaurus, and more like the thicker land carnivorous dinosaurs, such as Allosaurus or Tyrannosaurus rex. It had a low sail on its back and elongated neural spines, like Spinosaurus had on its back. But strictly speaking, these elongated neural spines did not form a sail structure. In the past, when describing its bones, it was often described as a low sail. From this position, we can clearly see that it was triangular, the pelvis was the highest point, and it gradually became shorter when it went down to the sides. This sail continued a lot backward. We know that Spinosaurids had a relatively large sail, and the end of the sail was here. The neural spines at the base of the tail were relatively short, and the neural spines that formed the tail fin gradually became larger. This was not the case with Succumus, which tapered down to the sides like a suspension bridge, a process that stretched far down the middle of the tail. It's a pity that the found fossils of its tail are not complete, so we can't speculate its exact body length now. According to the body length of common carnivorous dinosaurs, we speculate that its body length was about 9 to 10.5 meters. We speculate that the body length of this one was about 10.5 meters. When it was alive, the sides of the sail structure just mentioned were covered with a large amount of muscles. Succumimus was a relatively large genre of dinosaurs, and the sides of the neural spines could accommodate thicker muscles, which might be a major function of its back sail. It had a large body weight, so these two muscles helped it support its body and pulled the bones together, and they played a very important role. Visually, the higher nerve spines might be for decoration, so when designing the color of its body, we added to bright colors here. Succumimus might not be particularly brightly colored. The keratinous structure on its head might be brighter, it might have some lower key and brighter stripes on the highest part of its back, and it might have such stripes on its tail. Succumimus was large in size and good at fishing like a bird. The body colors of large birds fishing at the water's edge are usually relatively monotonous, and it's common to have large pieces of this color. Therefore, when designing patterns, we did not use particularly complicated patterns. There is no evidence for this, so different people may have different opinions. Let's look at its four limbs, which are relatively famous. The blood relationship between Succumimus and Baryonyx was very close, and Baryonyx had a very huge curved claw on its thumb. Succumimus was very similar to it, and had very large claws here too. Spinosaurus had the same structure here, but the claws of Spinosaurus were straighter, and those of Succumimus were more curved. Curved claws indicate that it was not used for walking, or supporting the body or swimming, and might have been used for a terrestrial behavior. Its claws were usually off the ground, so they could grow freely. Its claws might have served as a good anchor when it was fishing or hunting. Let's look at its hind legs. We found most of its legs, which were a bit longer than those of Spinosaurus. Apparently, it walked on two legs, and it had powerful hind legs. But we didn't find its feet, so based on the known Spinosaurus feet, we restored its feet, and its feet were completely different from those of Spinosaurus. It only had similar proportion with Spinosaurus, but the shape of its feet was more like that of a carnivore that walked on land. It had a reduced first toe. It did not step on the ground with four toes like Spinosaurus did. It did not have flat feet like Spinosaurus did. And it did not have flippers with toes. We made its feet look like those of a normal carnivorous dinosaur. Finally, let's look at its tail. We know that Succumimus did not have a tail like that of Spinosaurini, because among the relatively complete dinosaur tails that people have discovered so far, such as Rebrovenator and Ceratosaurus, some tail bones of these two genres of dinosaurs were relatively well preserved which were introduced in that article back then. As a genre of dinosaurs, 
that was very closely related to them. We speculate that the tale of Succumimus might be the same as theirs, like the tale of general theropod dinosaurs, from thick to thin, with a very thin tip, and it did not have a large paddle-shaped tail like Spinosaurus did. According to previous research on the bone density of Succumimus, we found that its bone density was very high, and it might sink in water. For it, swimming might be strenuous, so it should be a genre of carnivorous dinosaurs that walked on the river beach and on land. Although it hunted fish with its elongated mouth, it did not spend as long in water as crocodiles or Spinosaurus. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Thabo the Succumimus. Thank you all.